Hey guys, I wanted to do a quick video on an awesome piece I got in from Puerto Rico. These are 1950 Caribbean series uh, official score sheets. Um, it took place in Puerto Rico, so they used these uh, Puerto Rican Professional League score sheets um, used in the Puerto Rican Winter League. I was able to, you know, match up the scores pretty well. Um, with every game that was that Puerto Rico played in because these are only the games that Puerto Rico played in I believe they had their own score keeping track I'm not sure if other teams did as well but there are seven of these total um, there would normally be six but um, here is the final uh, score sheet because it was a tiebreaker um, between Panama and Puerto Rico uh, Panama handedly beat them, which was a pretty big surprise. They were considered an underdog. Um, the biggest name that I could find on this Panamanian team was Chet Brewer, who you know had a pretty long career with the Kansas City Monarchs. Um, played here and there uh, in South America and the Caribbean as well. But yeah, I believe he was credited with credited with the win in this game um so pretty cool to see that i mentioned him in another video i did with uh, satchel page where they went head to head had many strikeouts when they were facing each other um so i want to kind of get through some of these other teams here's cuba um cuba had guys like Al Gianfrido. They had a lot of guys returning from uh, Al Gianfrido, if you guys didn't know, was a um, hero in one of the Dodgers Yankees World Series. I think he had an amazing leaping catch against Joe DiMaggio, but I am I'm certainly forgetting that year. Um, somebody in the comments I'm sure will let me know, but uh, this was the Almendares Blues from Cuba. They had won the 1949 Caribbean Series, which was the first. Um, but uh, they did not perform up to that same level in this game. Um, here's another Cuba game. I'm trying to find a Venezuela score sheet for you guys here's panama again and i'll get to puerto rico last because that team is you know the focus of these score sheets kind of um here's venezuela they had guys like howard easterling and jim pendleton uh, jim pendleton a major leaguer howard easterling um had a great catching career in uh, the New York Leagues in the States and also played like many of these other guys uh, in South America and the Caribbean quite a bit. Um, and then this is really cool here is uh, Wilmer, Wilmer Fields on this Puerto Rican team actually came in and pitched the ninth inning, but he pinch hit, uh, or I guess he came in and pitched and he had an at bat and uh, he hit a home run to. I believe tie this game up or actually maybe go ahead because they did end up winning this game yeah so very cool Wilmer Fields um, another great ball player um, if you listen to the Black Diamonds podcast with the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum Bob Kendrick uh, he mentioned him quite a bit so really happy to have a name in there like that I'll keep going so we can talk about this Puerto Rican league team. Uh, this Puerto Rico team ended up winning uh, the Puerto Rico Winter League. And so they got the, the opportunity to represent Puerto Rico. But they were also reinforced by some of the best players of the Puerto Rican league um, that were not on this team during that play, so they were reinforced this national team. Um, another guy on Venezuela was uh, Chico Carrasco. 
I believe it is Chico and not a relative, although I'll have to go back and check that. But uh when I get to this Puerto Rican league team, um, what's really cool is... Um, boom. This is not the right one. Sorry. Here it is. Getting them all confused. But this is the first game. And I'll go to the back here. And what's really cool about this one is that it's autographed uh, by the whole starting lineup. Um, so I'll talk about the guys on the team. Uh, this is the first game. And Dan Bankhead started it. You guys might know him as the first black pitcher in the major leagues. He didn't have a stellar career with the Dodgers, but he did break that barrier down and, you know, uh, paved the way for a lot of other black pitchers like Don Newcomb, Joe Black, both of the Dodgers, and, you know, everyone who came after them. Um, you guys, you had guys like Roy Hughes and Stan Breard who were minor league players in the States, I believe, um, and Canada as well. Uh, Vic Power, an MLB name there, uh, who had, I think, seven gold gloves at first base. Sports writers hated him because he didn't use two hands, but he wants seven gold gloves, so I'm not really sure what their issue was with that. But uh, you got, there were also guys on the team like Juan E. Vargas. Um, these are just some really good-looking autographs that you don't see much. Uh, Gene Marklin, the leadoff batter, is over here in the columns of the types of hits. Um, so that one took me a while to find. And then on the front, there was Luis Almo's autograph, which is also hard to find. It's over this crease, but a pretty cool name to have as well. Um, just a big presence in the Puerto Rican Winter League. Um, a lot of these guys played for the San Truche Crabbers. Um, um, one of the biggest names on here. Oh, we have also Louis St. Clair there. But, uh, the biggest name on here who did play for the Crabbers is, uh, Willard Brown. Um, it was pretty shocking that any of these autographs were on here. It was first noticed by a friend of mine uh, who I sent photos of who collects scorecards um, and official lineup cards. Uh, he noticed the Dan Bankhead, and then I went back and, you know, lo and behold, there's a Hall of Fame uh, former Negro League autograph in here, which um, Willard Brown's is, I think, a little bit harder to find just because I don't think he was around when the big boon of card shows and autograph shows for these Negro Leaguers were present, so this is a harder to find one. I wouldn't normally have chased it, but I was really happy to, you know, get something like that. Um, as a Negro Leagues collector, as a guy who focuses a collection on integration, um, this whole set was kind of out of my wheelhouse, but, you know, I thought it would be cool to have a score sheet with so many of those names on it, um, but I had no idea I'd be getting something like a Willard Brown autograph when I purchased this. Um, none of these have been uh, certified, but I'm having a hard time thinking of you know who would want to fake these. Um, I don't plan on really certing these until if and when I sell this off, but uh, it'll all be packaged together. But that won't be for many years to come because I just think this is such a cool piece. Willard Brown being, you know, a key piece of integration when he signed with the Browns and played with uh, Hank Thompson for, you know, only a few months. But in one of the most southern cities in the major leagues at that time could not have been easy. So I'm really excited about this. Um. And I hope you guys kind of learn something or uh, enjoy it as much as I do just through the lens of my phone camera. But uh, I'm really excited and uh, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys later.